have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. And I'm Marin Johns. And uh, we have a, a, a special welcome to our YouTube viewers who had to get around a an age restriction to get on the show last, to see the show last week. We're working on that. But in the headlines this week, uh, President Biden and his defense secretary, uh, Lloyd Austin, lifted the ban on transgender troops. And our new out lesbian Department of Justice official has issued guidance that LGBTQ people are in fact protected in schools. Now, Arkansas's governor vetoed one terrible anti-trans bill after signing others, but on this one, the legislature overrode his veto. And a neo-Nazi has been spared prison time by a judge who believes he's suffered enough as a trans person. Interesting story. Uh, the, that out lesbian Georgia representative who was arrested for trying to witness uh, Governor Brian Kemp signing his voter suppression law, she is facing serious jail time. And guess who, guess who? We've got a new candidate looking at the California governor's race. It's a transgender celebrity. I wonder if you know who it is. She is. Uh, Patrick O'Connell, who founded Visual Aids and uh, the very famous Day Without Art. Uh, has died. And Lil Nas X's new song has debuted at number one, and he's got a message for us. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later, uh, but uh, there's no age restriction on watching that, and 100 million people have watched it. But we ran into an issue this week, last week with the show. For the first time, YouTube put an age restriction on us. You had to say, you know, over 18 or something in order to watch the show. And we are uh, objecting to that. They didn't accept the appeal from Free Speech TV. We're working on it. Uh, we, there is nothing, certainly on this show, uh, that goes beyond anything Lil Nas X is doing. And uh, it should not be age restricted. We depend on having younger viewers uh, being able to watch this show. You know, my thoughts on this, Andy, I think it's about artificial intelligence. They've got the artificial part right. They are lacking in the intelligence. They just see the word gay and they think it's, uh, you know, adults. Well, that shouldn't be. And we are going to pursue this. And we're going to also uh, make the show available in our emails on that we send out on Vimeo. We are on Vimeo as well, which does not have that same kind of restriction. But let's get to the anything else on this for now. I think, you know, I think we've got to be a little bit uh, vigilant about our digital um, platforms and, and, you know, realise what we're signing up for when we click those terms and conditions and we're accepting all kinds of protocols that keep shifting and they're really not within our control. So we'd love support from our viewers if we can uh, because, you know, we are, we are not just mature content. In fact, often we're immature, aren't we, Andy? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, the thing is, look, we're on Free Speech TV as well as Manhattan Neighborhood Network, where we originate. And Free Speech has some restrictions on us. They say, you know, we don't want any foul language, uh, mm -hmm. no nudity. So we, we uh, comply with that, which we would not have to do at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Uh, but that's fine with us because we're really just trying to give the news. And I don't see how anything we're doing is any more adult than CNN or MSNBC. Um, and a lot less so than the offensive Fox network. Correct. All right. Well, let's turn to the news. Uh, as we just when we finished taping last week, uh, the Department of Defense announced uh, Secretary Lloyd Austin that they're ending the ban. There he is with President Biden on uh, the ban on trans troops that was imposed in 2018 by uh, pre uh, the former guy, we'll call him. So they're basically, this is gonna go into effect on April 30th. It's just basically reverting to the Obama policy of 2016. Uh, the Palm Center estimates there were 14,700 trans troops serving in the active component and in the reserves. Uh, and uh, don't forget, 
this was pending in the courts as it was, the Supreme Court allowed Trump's ban to go into effect without ruling on it back in January 2019, and it was under court mm -hmm. challenge. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe it when I read that there were nearly 15,000 uh, service members that are, you know, transgender. And I liked what Don Kirby told uh, the members of the press in the press conference. The Secretary of Defense strongly believes that the all-volunteer force thrives when it is composed of diverse Americans who can meet the high standards for military service and an inclusive force that strength strengthens our national security posture. Um, that was coming out of the Pentagon, and I agree. Who could be against that? I hope YouTube isn't offended. And how about that Matt Gates? We didn't talk oh. about we didn't talk about him last week. He faces at least 10 years in prison and a life on the sex offenses registry uh, for basically uh, trafficking a 17 year old for sexual purposes across borders, et cetera. Uh, but uh, there's a there's a twist to the story this week. Uh, f first of all, one of the twists is that he sought a blanket pardon from Trump uh, while, while Trump was still obviously in office, didn't get it. But Katie Hill, the bisexual U.S. representative from California, who resigned when her ex released revenge porn, said she had been very friendly with Gates, even though in Congress, even though they disagreed on the issues. Uh, and he defended her during her scandal. But now she says Gates is not just accused of trafficking a 17 year old, but of showing nude photos of women that he bedded mm. to colleagues, which is mm. coming from the colleagues. So something that she's working to make illegal. Andy, did you read her op-ed in Vanity Fair at yes, all? That's, and that's what did you think of it? Well, I mean, I, you know, uh, she's she's withholding a judgment on her old friend Matt, but her mother said, "Cut him loose." <laughs> I found it quite. I thought it was really naive. Uh, I, I think she's probably a lovely woman, but I think she hasn't really interrogated why he might have uh, gravitated towards her, and um, you know that it wasn't perhaps all tea and sympathy in the green green room at Fox News. I, I, I just, you know, I just look at that guy and I think he's up to no good all the time. He's and I don't think he's really examined what he might have been after or what he might have sensed from her. There are a lot of people out there who really do gravitate towards you when you are in trouble because uh, their motives, you don't know what they are. That's me. I don't want to say any more. I just, I just think uh, uh, he, um, you know, she does try to redeem the column at the end by saying he should, he should resign immediately. But obviously, I just don't understand why these people whose private lives are in such disarray seek public office and public service when they, they I don't know, I don't understand. Well, I think people's private lives have always been in disarray to some extent. And we all have things that we might be ashamed of if they got on the front page of the New York Times, uh, uh, not trafficking a 17 year old, but you know, things that we might be embarrassed by. Katie Hill did not have to resign. I mean, there were maybe investigations going on about her behavior for some of the involved you know, staffers and things like that. But she could have written it out. Andrew Cuomo is writing it out for the time being and still has a lot of power. Did you think she should have resigned? Uh, no, no. And it, look, it was just one unholy mess. But what I, I, I've said this before, and some people don't disagree with me. I don't agree with me, I should say, rather. I feel when it's different having a mess of a private life if you, you know, run a bookstore if or if you, you know, uh, whatever. If you're if you're in holding a public office where you are serving your constituents, it, it to me it's just common sense to get that part of your life in order because this this is what happens. People are going to come for you and um, I, I mean, it shouldn't be that way. It really That's shouldn't. True. It Tom, shouldn't be that Jeff, way. Thomas Jefferson was, uh, you know, uh, noted at the time of, of having uh, a, a mistress as his slave, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sally Hemings. At the time, uh, there was that scandal. I mean, there have been, I mean, scandals uh, throughout throughout history. Again, with social media, it gets out there a lot more. Do you know what I think, though? So we have the same situation in Australia right now where our governing party is being rocked by sex scandals. I think there's three or four going at the one time. And what it seems to me is it's really connected to power and privilege. You know, these people are 
it, it's appalling misconduct that's happening right now in Australia. There's uh, accusations of rape. There's a woman who committed suicide. Um, there is, you know, the, the the gay male staffer who committed an indecent act on a on a politician's uh, office desk. Which I mean, we only know about because his ex boyfriend took pictures of it and released it uh, to the public. So so the staffer got fired. Yes, uh, it was he was he was a victim of re revenge porn. What what I'll say is this: if you are attracted to politics through your ego rather than the spirit of service, yes. I think this is where you go astray. Well, I mean, I think most people go astray because they sell their souls to the corporations who fund them in an office. I mean, if only our our needs, the needs of average people and and poor people, et cetera, were their number one priority, but they but they're not. And it's reflected in the budgets and the laws that they pass. By the way, uh, move, I don't, are, you, are we ready to move on? Yeah. Mitch McConnell this week, belly aching about corporate interference in Georgia politics. That's rich. And then he says he wants them to stay out of it. Just keep sending us money. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. should we do well, Georgia. What, what else is happening in Georgia, Andy? Not much well, good. We will talk about that. I will, I'm trying to keep the order of the, of the photos. Uh, let's give them some good news. The Department of Justice this week uh, issued a memo saying that anti-LGBTQ discrimination is now, once again, banned in schools, reversing yet another Trump attack. And it was issued by Pamela Carlin. You may remember her from the impeachment hearings. That's where she, I believe she's speaking there. Uh, she's now a lesbian who represented the plaintiffs in the Bostock case, which is that wonderful decision that she is citing that says discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity is sex discrimination and illegal. So she wrote a memo that Title IX's coverage of sex covers sexual orientation and gender identity, and this will be used in court battles against all those anti-LGBT laws that we've been talking about. Yes. So that's great. Um, and I think we should really go to the news of the week uh, in Arkansas. Mm. What, what, what's your take on this? Arkansas's governor vetoes well, yes, he did. Uh, Asa Hutchinson, we talked about him last week. Uh, uh, you know, he signed an anti-LGBT uh, anti bill, um, uh, basically allowing people to cite religious reasons for discriminating against us. But he vetoed the bill that banned transition-related care to minors, uh, saying it would create new standards of legislative interference with physicians and parents as they deal with some of the most complex and sensitive matters involving young people. So uh, he listened to parents, he listened to physicians, and he said, we shouldn't do this. Uh, but the legislature can override you with a simple majority vote, and they did overwhelmingly uh, override his veto. But uh, it was, you know, it was encouraging that he got it. He went on Tucker Carlson's show to defend what he did, and Tucker Carlson, who is the lowest of the low, kept saying, Governor, you're, you're for chemical castration of children? I mean, he kept, he kept saying it over and over. And Hutchinson held his ground and he said, hold off. This bill does not even allow people who have been receiving treatment to continue to receive treatment has to be cut off. And as we reported last week, kids are writing to health providers and saying, first of all, they're trying to take their own lives over this and say they will take their own lives if this is cut off. This is the most... This is the first of this kind, and there's another one in North Carolina that's on deck. It would ban trans youth. It will also require parents to, uh, excuse me, professionals who become aware of a kid, uh, you know, engaging in gender nonconformity to contact the parents. And, and you know, uh, it's, these, this is just not. And the point is, I mentioned Tucker Carlson. Where do you think all these Republicans get the ideas to do this? Fox News has been flogging anti-trans stuff for years and, and is giving them the signals to do this. And that's where they take their cues from. They sure do. This bill, uh, HB 1570, this is the one we're talking about, this is erroneously called Save Adolescents from Experimentation Act. That, that really is safe. I mean, this is just uh, appalling how they've even dressed the bill up to... Uh, 
make it sound like it's a good thing. Well, Hutchinson said he would have signed it if it was just banning gender reassignment surgery for minors. There is no gender reassignment surgery for minors. They get hormone treatments, they get hormone blockers, those kinds of things. Even the Walton Family Foundation, very big in Arkansas, spoke out against this. And Democrat Senator Clark Taylor called it the most powerful, again, bullying the most vulnerable people in our state. So the ACLU is preparing litigation against this. Uh, we had Arlie Christian from the ACLU on last week, and they said that uh, they're on it. And I, I hope that they can stop. Yeah, me too. All right. Did you read that article about the, the, the survey of the U.S. Supreme Court cases on religious freedom and the Times this week? Over Absolutely. I'm glad somebody's done a study on this and is actually tracking the way we have drifted yeah. away from uh, a kind of governance that serves all of us. And, and also the religious minorities that um, have been protected in the past past were actually minority uh, minorities and now it's uh, really Christianity the Christian wow. organizations who are being protected by these uh, religious freedom they found that over the last 70 years there's been a 35 percent increase in favorable rulings to religion and that under Chief Justice Roberts uh, the, um, the decisions have gone 81 percent of the time on the side of religion and whatever the case is. And I'm not saying it shouldn't ever go with religion. I mean, it used to be about half and half. You know, I mean, religious, of course, religious minorities and religious people have rights and they deserve to be protected. But they're now trying to impose religion on everybody else and they're getting away with it. And of course, we are awaiting. We won't know until probably June. What happens in the Philadelphia case? Can you get government money and discriminate against gays against the against the anti-discrimination laws? Mm -hmm. And the justices, there's really five justices who are responsible for this drift: uh, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, John Roberts, and of course Brett Kavanaugh. And to add to that, Amy Coney Barrett. So uh, we're doomed unless we can reform the courts. Mm. All right. Let's move. Uh, so Georgia, let's move on to Georgia. Yes. Uh, we told you about out state representative Park Cannon. That's a picture of her when she took office in 2016, when she was about 22 or three. Uh, but she was arrested knocking on the door of Governor Brian Kemp as he signed the Jim Crow voter suppression law. She is now facing eight years in prison for obstruction and preventing or disrupting a general assembly session. Uh, she's raising money for her defense and promises that everything she raises beyond what she needs for the defense will go into fighting for voting rights. Um, you know, uh, this Georgia law lets the legislature replace a local election board if they don't like the results and, and takes away power from the secretary of state in having the legislature run elections that they get elected to. This is fascism. Is oh, of course. a bad word to say? Well, no. <laughs> the F word. But in addition to this, what bothers, what troubles me about this incident is what happened in the incident itself, that there is video showing her softly knocking on the door. There's nobody screaming or yelling or shouting or, or creating an uprising that could have in any way been mistaken for the uh, the the rioting of, at the state capitol. There's, this is captured on video, but will this video evidence stand up against the 13-page incident report written by the state troopers who, who dragged her away? Um, it seems crazy to me that people are saying two different things happened. Well, there are, the state troopers were already throwing in charges that she, she stepped on our foot. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, not a violent person. Uh, but it was nice to see Major League Baseball pull the All-Star game out of Atlanta. Uh, I, I certainly think that's a good signal. And I was surprised that President Biden called for that. Uh, whereas Stacey Abrams in the state of Georgia, who wants to run for governor again, said, I don't want people to boycott us. I want them to stay and help us fight this. But our Republican colleagues have to understand when you take actions like this, people are going to react to it. And it, so it is good to see corporations stand up, but they better stand up by stop funding uh, the, uh, the the bad 
uh, people who pass these laws. You know, Facebook paused their donations to a lot of Republicans after the after the coup attempt. They're back giving them money. All right. All right. Where are we going now? How about Seattle? Oh, I want <laughs> how about this story? You want to take it? The federal judge? No, you go. Oh. All right. So a federal judge declined to impose prison time on a former member of a neo-Nazi ring that was harassing journalists, 21-year-old Tyler Parker Dieppe, uh, who is saying he suffered enough being transgender from his co-conspirators. Uh, he was charged in 2020 with three others for being part of the Atom Waffen Division, a white supremacist group. Uh, they left Nazi posters at the homes of journalists and where, where was it? Florida, Arizona, Washington Florida. State. Wow. So the U.S. attorney wanted 16 months, and the defense said he suffered a lot of abuse from his family and school for being transgender. And he tearfully apologized and was expelled from the group for being trans. And now he fears retaliation from them. Hmm. I, I feel so sad about this because one of the one of the things we've always said, or almost like a truism in our community, is that the young ones are better. The young ones are going to grow up better without the problems, without the internalized homophobia or internalized transphobia. And it really saddens me that Taylor Parker de Pepe didn't actually, you know, decide to get involved with the transgender community, um, be proud and um, be an activist and, you know, go for the, li the light, uh, instead gravitating towards this uh, quite hopeless sounding neo-Nazi gang, um, it just saddens me. I, I just do want to tell young people in our community who are coming out, you know, go towards the light, go towards the things that will strengthen you, not weaken you. Well, Anne and I worked at the Hetrick Martin Institute for LGBT youth back in the, back in the 80s and 90s. And one of the things that interested me about the kids is some of them held very conservative positions on issues, anti-abortion, whatever. And par I think part of that is, you're coming into this new identity that you didn't ask for, you're discovering about yourself, but you sort of still wanna be who you were or connecting to your family, your religion, your politics even. Although usually once you accept who you are, that's gonna move you out of the Republican party almost for sure. <laughs> Seriously, it's a big indicator. And, but that's what happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. Uh, and I, so I think uh, he'll get over it. And uh, but uh, the, a more prominent transgender person is making news in California. Yes. Uh, now, Caitlyn Jenner is probing the uh, possibility of stepping into Governor Gavin Newsom's uh, shoes because the Republicans are recalling the election. Is that correct? I got they, that they right. Will, they got it on the ballot. A recall. There will be a recall election, and then there will be an if if he gets recalled, there will be an election. I think he's up for election anyway this year. So you know, there's going to be an election. But Caitlin is exploring it, and who is she exploring it with? GOP fundraiser Carolyn Wren, who was one of the fundraisers for the coup attempt rally on January the sixth. Uh, but who also, uh, Caitlin met Carolyn through the American Unity Fund, which is a GOP nonprofit promoting LGBT issues. I mean, good luck with that. I, you know, again, I come back to this idea of service, public service. If she's doing it for the right reasons, wonderful. If she's doing it just to expand her, uh, you know, career or ego, I think it's probably for the wrong reasons. And it's a tough gig. Uh, California is a big state, they've got a lot of issues, and I think climate change is right up there as uh, probably number one issue right now. Uh, so good luck, Caitlin, if you do run. I wonder how Caitlin feels about the new law that went into effect in California for trans inmates. They're now allowed to yep. be in facilities based on their gender identity, and there have been 200, since it went into effect in January, 261 requests from for transfers, almost all of them wanting to go from a, a men's facility to the, a women's facility. So it's coming from trans women. There's, a, there's some resistance within, and it's going very slowly in terms of processing the, this request. And you know, some of the prison officials are sort of whipping up misinformation. The, the men are coming for you in the women's facility. I mean, look, there are some issues around you know, women who, who were 
um, you know, uh, crimes were committed against them by men. You know, they try to play on those fears, but uh, that's what's happening in California right now. Mm. Okay. Hey, did you read this thing about we're down to 15 total lesbian bars in the, in the United States now? Did you read it that? is ever short. I thought it might even be less than that, to be honest. Um, I, I'm hoping when we get out of this pandemic that there will be a resurgence and a, a you know, re-evaluation of, of bricks and mortar establishments for our community. That's what I'm hoping. So uh, uh, you, you, want, you want the bars to make a comeback? You want them to be different kinds? You want coffee houses? You want, what do you want? What do you want to see? Well, I mean, what do I want to see? I mean, our generation and the ones before us even, really did gravitate towards uh, alcohol a as a way of, you know, uh, relaxing and really cutting to the chase of getting to know people. It was, it was the fastest way, in a way, to try and, you know, break down barriers. And I do wonder if younger generations have such a dependence on it as we did. So it may not just be bars. It may indeed be, you know, coffee, coffee houses, places where people can access their digital media, and chat to people while they're in a, you know, a, a brick and mortar place. Well, of course, everybody can meet, you know, through these devices now, and they will just say, let's meet for coffee and get together. And that's the way they made. Even people who go to bars, I noticed even 10 years ago, were in the bar, bar, you know, looking at the people in the room online to see what their grinder profiles were, or Tinder profiles were right there in the bar. So the socializing is, is very, very different. But of course, most of this has to do with the pandemic. You know, lesbian bars were suffering before the pandemic, that's for sure. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the reasons is because the more we're accepted into other places, we, we can mix freely, the less, I suppose, we, we need to seek out our own as the only choice. But I will say there's really nothing like walking into Cubby Hole in the West Village for happy hour when it's packed and seeing your people and yeah. seeing them right in front of you. There's yeah. really nothing like that. Even if you only do it once a year, do it. Go and have a beer, support your local, and then they'll be there when you really do need them. Or a ginger ale. Uh, or a ginger ale. Meanwhile, the Pyramid C Club is closing permanently, supposedly. This is in the East Village, a real institution. Uh, our director, Rich, made me aware of this. Um, it was a storied, uh, his, had a storied history with the ACT UP members back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it was also the place that elevated RuPaul and Lady Bunny. Listen, it's, it's real. You don't just come out of your iPhone and spring like Apollo, you know, into the universe. You actually have to turn up and you actually have to, you know, take space and hold space in society. So if we lose all of these community spaces, I wonder how you're going to make your debut as a queer. That's how I wonder. Well, so, well, some, I mean, remember, we've been reporting on this, right? How people identify. And actually, there are fewer people identifying as gay or lesbian. Uh, some, many are saying they're non-binary or queer. And it's broader. And it's, it's, it's less, you know, categorized uh, in that sense. It's, it's just more of a spectral thing. Uh, again, I have a younger roommate. He's gay. But he uh, he will meet he, he likes to go to non-gay bars to meet people. I mean, he'll arrange to meet people, and it's just a general environment, you know. So whatever. Um, times are changing. They are. All right. Um, let's uh, let's go to. Well, speaking of segregation, Pride Airways. <laughs> it's in the works. They say they're only going to cater to LGBT plus travelers. And I don't think that's really the plane. Maybe it is. And uh, but it was an illustration for this story. They're only going to fly twice a week from San Francisco to London. The goal is to have a fun flight where LGBT people can be themselves. Uh, it's sort of like the cruises, right? Olivia cruises and uh, what's what's the Atlantis cruises for gay men. Uh, Peter Tatchell, the great activist from the UK, says it smacks of segregation and the consequences for privacy and human rights are deeply concerning since the directors of this airline have not confirmed that they are LGBT. He calls it a s silly fad. Well, but uh, obviously some people are going to gravitate towards this and think it's going to be fun. But you can't, you can't totally, I don't think you can run a public service and say only gay people can come to this thing. 
I think you have to be open to anybody who wants to be on the plane. See, it depends what they're offering. You know, if, if all the flight attendants were drag queens, it's very possible I will book. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I was once on an American Airlines flight um, and I just leaned in. I was flying with my partner of the time and just before takeoff, you know, because she was kind of, you know, nervous about flying, I just leaned in and gave her a little, little peck, a little touch of the nose. And the flight attendant basically rebuked us for that as if it was some gigantic display. Um and I, and I just felt really, I always had a bad feeling about American uh, after that. I really felt it was homophobic that if we'd been a straight couple, she wouldn't have done that. So it has to be the same standards for everybody in terms of displays of affection, but people get unhinged still at same sex affection and they got to get over it. And I hope American Airlines is, did you make a complaint or? I think I tweeted about it and they said, oh, where, you know, the wording they used was something like, uh, they made it out like it was my, my fault or so, so the wording was something like, you know, as they do in a restaurant when you when you send back a dish, something like, we're sorry, the dish was not to your liking, rather than say, I'm sorry if our staff upset you. It will um, never happen again. That's what they should have said. Right. Yeah. Well, speaking of cracking down on LGBTQ affection, of course, we reported how the Catholic Church says they will not bless same-sex unions because they cannot bless sin. Outrageous. So it was a rally outside St. Patrick's on Easter Sunday to protest the Pope and the Vatican's condemnation of us. Uh, Brendan Fay, who's in the middle there, I think, uh, who's a big dignity activist, the gay Catholic group, said the church blesses goats, dogs, cats, and Easter eggs. But gay couples are apparently unworthy. A hundred theologians, Catholic, signed a pledge to bless same-sex couples. There were 900 more who approved of it, but are remaining anonymous because they're afraid. Uh, and by the way, uh, I read today that the very famous pro-gay Catholic priest theologian, Hans Kjung, uh, died, the, died. He was one of the people behind Vatican II, which did liberalize many things in the Catholic Church, if you can believe that. But there's been a lot of retrenchments since. And he was silenced by the church at one point for just you know, speaking out as a theologian. But he wrote many, many, many great books. And Hans Kjung, 93. Okay. Um, what does a blessing cost? A blessing doesn't cost anything. This is what annoys me. What does it cost them? You tell me. Well, uh, when you run an all-male dominated church uh, uh, where people have, where the priests are not even supposed to have uh, sexuality, basically, uh, it, you know, they would be giving up on their power structure. All right, in New York State, a lot of bills are passing right now and they are ending long-term solitary confinement in prisons. Uh, you can't isolate someone for more than 15 days. This was all spurred by the death of transgender inmate uh, Leilene Polcano after an epileptic seizure. So we're making some progress on that front. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, Michigan? The Court of Appeals there. They recognize yeah. this? Yes. Um, good news for same sex parents. So, two women who um, used to be together um, and had, I think, two kids uh, basically uh, had a, a ruling from Michigan. Uh huh? One contributed the egg, one was the womb. Yeah. Exactly. So one, they, they were not, they were not married. They were parents. One was a genetic parent and the other parent gave birth. Lanesha Matthews and Kyria Lefever. Um, they had twins together using assisted reproduction, um, in vitro fertilization rather. And, um, basically the one that didn't carry the child was, uh, ruled in the court as having no rights in a custody. Mm -hmm. Now they, she wants custody of, of the children. And the courts they decided, broke up. They decided the against her in the first place, but this was the Court of Appeals, and they reversed Court of Appeals. That's they reversed the trial court's uh, ruling so that they now have equal access to the children as equally weighted parents, which is really good. And the, the National Center for Lesbian Rights uh, Family Law Director, Kathy Skamura, 
uh, said that she, we know that families are formed in many ways, recognising genetics as the only basis for parent-child relationships, leaves out many families and harms children by right. separating them right. from their parents. Thank you, NCLR, the National Center for Lesbian Rights. Thank you also to Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia, a good guy, who signed the bill banning the LGBTQ panic defense there in Virginia. And, you know, we've been talking about trans athletes. So this group, Athlete Ally, did a study of Division I colleges and found that 70% don't offer LGBTQ support resources for LGBTQ athletes. 80% don't have a code for the fans in the stands about conduct that addresses harassment of players or of spectators. And 92% don't have fully inclusive policies for trans athletes. Uh, so they're calling this the Athlete Equality Index, and you can read all about it at athleteally.org. It'll be, that link will be in our email. Go to our email, at, get, go, sign up for our emails every week at gayusatv.org. We'll also give you the link to the Vimeo if you can't go through YouTube and all that stuff. All right. All right, some, some obits. Uh, we want to update you on Paul Feynman, we, the, the first out gay high court judge in New York, who died at the age of 61. We now know that that's, that's, that's him with, uh, on the right uh, with his husband, Robert Ostergaard. Um, we now know the cause of death. It was acute myeloid leukemia, a cancer that starts in the bone marrow and often spreads to the blood. Um, so he is survived by his husband. Uh, who he married in 2013, as well as his mother and two siblings. He is a former president of the International Association of LGBTQ Judges. You want to tell us about Pat Collins? She was a fabulous Broadway lighting designer. This is right. Tony Award winner uh, yes. uh, on Broadway for 50 years. She has died at the age of 88 of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. I think the most remarkable thing in the story is that she's survived by her partner, of 64 years. <laughs> 64 Dr. years. Sturmer, Sturmer, yes. That's uh, amazing. Well, she and can you imagine? She won like the life. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I'm just imagining the life of working on Broadway and working, uh, you know, there are so few female te theater technicians anyway, uh, but she did some lighting designs for some pretty terrific shows and it must have been a fascinating life and to have held a really long-term relationship together all that time, 64 years, is, oh. is pretty fantastic. She won the Tony for I'm Not Rappaport in 86, but she lit more than 30 Broadway shows, including Eight Miss mm -hmm. Haven with uh, Andre De Shields and Doubt, uh, for which she was also nominated. Uh, she is remembered by John Lee Beatty, who is a scenic designer, as doing lighting like her personality, nervy and intelligent, but with a sensitive side. Uh, she also worked in regional theaters throughout the United States and Europe. All right. Uh, international news, or you got anything else? International? Do we, what do we have time? Um, oh, there was a, in, in Ghana, police have arrested 22 LGBTQ people at a so-called lesbian wedding. It seems to me more like building up anybody who's different. We don't know. They, they claim it wasn't a lesbian wedding, but uh, well, somebody that's called not the good. And we have them. Somebody called the cops on them and said, we will burn them. We will burn all of them. Uh, the police sent out shared videos of the arrests, uh, LGBT rights Ghana is working to free them and fighting off a campaign to get shut down themselves. Uh, I don't think Fox News will include this in their series on cancel culture somehow. But, and better news from China, the popular young internet celebrity, Abil, Abby Lee, A-B-B-I-L-Y, there she is, 19 years old. She announced she's trans transgender, Officially a girl, she said, uh, in a post that re has received support from Chinese netizens and her fans. Um, she said she enjoyed wearing her mom's heels since she was little. Her announcement got six million views within days, probably up to whatever. And she recalled being bullied in school, forced to use the boys' bathroom. Her two million fans love her dancing videos inspired by female idols on Chinese version of TikTok. 
All right. Um, so we talked about Australia already. What about uh, what about Russia? Uh, they pr uh, uh, the premier documentary film festival there pulled a film about a gay man. Uh, excuse me, a gay MMA uh, mixed martial arts fighter from Chechnya after receiving threats. The film festival received threats if they showed this. It's called Silent Voice. It shows the fighter having to flee Belgium after his brother discovers he's gay. So he, he runs off to Belgium. But, you know, censorship in Russia, nothing new. And then in Canada, a gay Palestinian, try to follow this, a gay Palestinian migrant uh, by the name of S A M E R Samer uh, Samir, uh, they're not giving a last name. He sought asylum in Canada because he was harassed as Muslim in Ohio. All right, and Canada won't give him asylum because when he was the guy's thirty three. When he was eighteen years old, he was in an accident. It was ruled vehicular homicide. His best friend died, and you can't be given asylum if you are, have been convicted of that kind of a crime. But he said if, he, now his home country is Jordan. And if, he says his mm -hmm. father and brother say they will kill him if he returns by throwing him off a building or burning him alive. Uh, so he's a, they're trying to make an appeal here, a final last minute appeal, but uh, it looks like Canada is set to uh, deport him. All right, AIDS news? Over to you. All right. So there was an HIV outbreak in the largest county in West Virginia, Kan Kanawa. And Joe Manchin, Senator Manchin, who holds all the cards in the Senate these days, wrote the CDC, this is the most concerning in the United States. I wish he had that much concern for LGBT rights because he's not supporting our bill. Uh, back in February, Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis, who's been on the show at the, CD, at the CDC, met with their HIV task force. 64% of these cases are due to sharing needles, but in 2018 in West Virginia, needle exchange programs were canceled. So now on an emergency basis, this happened in Indiana too. They're trying to reinstate needle exchange so that so many people don't die. Ugh. All right, uh, Broadway Backwards, yep. the, the show that we were promoting uh, from Broadway Cares and the LGBT Center, they, this is during virtual, virtual, and they basically, you know, they did some new numbers, but they also ran some past tapes. They raised a record-breaking $749,000 for those groups. Uh, back to Governor Northam in Virginia, he also signed a bill modernizing the HIV laws there. Uh, 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 somewhat curbing the HIV criminalization. It's the first Southern state to do so, uh, but the final bill still makes it a class six felony for transmission, $2,500 fine or up to five years in prison. But it does help to reduce HIV stigma and decrease barriers to prevention services. In New York, the Callan Lord Center is uh, la launched a free clinic for sex workers. It's called Cecilia's Occupational Inclusion Network, named for a community activist, Cecilia Gentili. All right. She now, does so yeah. much work for us. Uh, Cecilia is terrific. Yes. Very tireless worker. Yes, yes, indeed. And then we lost Patrick O'Connell this week. Uh, he's died at the age of, I'm not sure if he was 67 or 68. He was born in 1953. He was the founding director of Visual AIDS, which is still going strong, from 1989 to 95. He planned the first Day Without Art in 89, 1989. That's the day when museums cover up artworks to show the losses that we're experiencing from AIDS. It was very dramatic and profound back, back then and still is. They still do the Day Without Art. He was also a major mover behind the Night Without Light and the and the red, red Ribbons. He was a big mover in terms of that making that an international symbol. You saw it on all the celebrities at the award shows. Uh, he did that. He received many awards, including an honorary doctorate from Trinity College. Patrick O'Connell, one of our great, great AIDS leaders. And yeah. Anne might not let me do this story if, if she were here, uh, but... There's a report of a, a phase one trial of a new HIV vaccine 
based on the Moderna COVID-19 inoculation. It showed a 97% antibody response in those phase one clinical trials. So it could become uh, the first stage of a multi-step strategy to combat HIV. And, you know, we were hoping for this. Everybody turned around when they got it. We got this COVID vaccine within a year and said, what about HIV? You know, and some of the technology is being used here. It was just a study on 48 adults. Now they're going to test it on people who might need the vaccine and see if it does any protection for them. But it was just a safety thing. And so some hope there. But remember, yeah, something good out of this. <laughs> well, I, you know, I say, you know, hope for a vaccine, but there are treatments, folks, and there is prep to prevent you from getting HIV. But a vaccine would be nice. All right, entertainment news. Um, so, Lil Nas X, number one single again. Uh, with his new song, Montero, Call Me By Your Name. We have a picture of him there. Uh, that's uh, him. And then there's him with doing a lap dance for Satan. I, don't, I hope that doesn't get us uh, knocked off YouTube again well, with an age restriction. But it's not getting him. I mean, when I look this up, it's, for, it's the number one song on Billboard's Hot 100. And it's his second number one hit after Old Town Road. It had... This is an unfathomable to me. 100 million views. I mean, <laughs> this guy knows how to get publicity. But do you like this song? I, it, look, I'm not a music man. So as people know here, I don't review music often. I don't, I go to musicals, uh, but uh, it's provocative. I, I love the, the, the theme of it, which is really about mm -hmm. all the persecution that he faced. He said this week, this will open doors for many other queer people to simply exist, is what he said. But the rapper, uh, Sada Baby, I don't know Sada, wished that his God was punishing Lil Nas X instead of DMX, who overdosed and is on life support. Uh, hasn't apologized oh. for that yet. But Lil Nas X, in response to Sada Baby, is just enjoying the attention because that's what's driving this. All right, did you watch any of the Ernest Hemingway series on PBS? I've been watching it. He's quite a I character. Well, uh, tell me it's Ken, about Burns. it's Ken Burns. And there's this big thread of gender fluidity in Ernest Hemingway. You know, his mother used to dress him as a girl with his sister, but she also used to dress the sister as a boy. So who knows what the mother was up to? She was pretty conservative, actually. But, yeah. uh, but it doesn't seem to deal with any male lovers, you know? Uh, so, and he had four wives and, it, and he killed a lot of animals and, you know, had a lot of uh, controversial views. But it's an interesting series. How about that Kate Winslet? I love Kate Winslet. I love her. She's very, very loquacious. She she talks very well. She's very emotionally present. And um, she gave an interview uh, with, I think it was, was it The Independent, in which she said that she knew of at least four gay actors who are keeping their sexuality hidden due to the belief that if they come out, they will lose their roles. Oh, the Sunday Times, not The Independent, rather. Um, and I'm, I'm now we're all like, who is it? Who is it? And I think because she uh, she didn't really talk about their genders, so they could be female or male. But the one person she does, uh, she teases it out a little bit. She says that many of these people are young actors, some well-known already who are starting out. Some are starting out. They're terrified their sexuality will be revealed and that it will stand in the way of their being cast in straight roles. Um, she said that uh, she has an anecdote um that she knows a well-known actor who was recently told by an American agent to keep the fact that they are bisexual a secret. The agent said, I understand you are bisexual. I wouldn't publicize that. Um, very interesting. I, you know, again, in our environment, you know, look, I mean, uh, I had to use up some airline miles, so I started getting People magazine, and it's keeping me a little bit more up on pop culture. The editor of People is, is gay. And they cover a lot of L LGBT celebrities and their partners and their lives. And it's very hard to keep your 
quote on your personal life. I'm not going to call it your private life. If it's totally your private life, what you're doing behind closed doors, we don't know about it. But if you have a partner, it's going to get out. It's going to be talked about. It's going to, people are going to take, if you're a big enough celebrity, they're going to take pictures of you and they're going to put them, whether you like it or not. I mean, they were taking pictures of Kevin Spacey making out with guys, you know, up in the mountains uh, for years. And yet he still never wanted to talk about it. And of course, you know, uh, this is a very sensitive issue with a lot of our viewers. And we don't, we don't, uh, you know, try to expose, you know, anybody who's going to get hurt by it. But public figures who lead public gay lives by going out and, you know, being seen with people, are, are we expected then to just ignore what we see in front of our eyes? Hmm. Look, I, you know, my thoughts on this, I, I've known straight actors, very, very good, very famous straight actors who also didn't want to talk about their private lives. One actress in particular who's won every award under the sun, she said to me, I'd rather not talk about that because when, when you see me, I just want you to see the character. I think that's, and cool. I, I think that's fine. Sure. If you don't want to, if you don't want to talk about your, you know, that's fine. I mean, you know, I'm just saying if you are a public figure, uh, just you know, they people will tend to want to write about your your relational life if they if they can see it. Uh, you know, like people show up to award shows with their partners on their arms, right? Mostly, uh, even though the partners are not necessarily interested in being in the public eye. So it's there. But well, by the way, what did you think about? Did you see Am Ammonite the Cape? Oh Wilson yes, film? yes, indeed. I look. I thought it was good. Uh, I thought that there was what it is. Tell people eighteen forties. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a very it's a very grim British drama set in the 19th huh. century about a, a real life pale, paleontologist who Mary Anning, who is played by Kate Winslet, who um, there's no historical record that she was gay, really definitively. But uh, the director who uh, wrote this story and directed it, Francis Lee, decided that he would make her gay. And um, it is extraordinary in many regards. There's some incredible scenes. I think Kate Winslet's fabulous. I think Saoirse Ronan is always fabulous. Um, I just had a couple of nitpicky things about it, which is, you know, there's a, a scene, the penultimate scene at the end where they are deciding uh, why they can't be, to, they can or cannot be together. The way it was written didn't ring true to me, and I think that's because, frankly, there was not a lesbian in the room, uh, not in the um, not in the wheelhouse of directing, writing, or acting. Oh. And I think that's where. But the sex scenes in this film are terrific, and I'm not meant to sound. That's not to sound like strange. It actually is acting, and I think that Kate Winslet talked at length about this, which was, um, you know, she was the proudest of those scenes of anything in her career she's ever done. In fact, prob probably the proudest. She said this is her best work. And I think that when we criticise straight actors for playing gay, what I want to ask people is what do you think acting is? It's a suspension of disbelief that also paradoxically carries truth. Um, and if we if we disagree that that's what it is now, if we want acting and, and, and uh, the theatre arts and film to do the heavy lifting for politics and how we really want the world to look, then I think we have to renegotiate what our contract with fiction is. That's my belief. Because I would like gay people to be allowed to play straight if they wanted to, well, as uh, actors. Uh, and... And you, you know, legally you can't discriminate in casting, but of course we also have non-traditional casting uh, where we're crossing more racial lines and things. And to some extent, gender lines, you know, casting men as women and women as men, that happens over the years, et cetera. Uh, but, um, th you know, th there certainly has been a thing about, especially with transgender roles, which almost always went to cisgendered people, uh, th that they be played by trans people. That became a thing. And, mm -hmm. and that you remember there were actors that said, okay, I'm not gonna take that role. I'm gonna leave it for a trans person. But it doesn't happen as much with, with gay roles and lesbian roles. And Kate said she wasn't even aware that this was offered to anybody who was lesbian. Yes. I mean, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I think we want the industry to catch up, and I think that we want especially the industry to catch up to transgender actors and create a space for them in the industry, as there's always been a space for gay, bisexual and lesbian people yeah. in the industry. In fact, some of them are the best actors we have. So it's time that we made room commercially for transgender performers, right. yes. And 
you know, Ryan Murphy, when he made The Boys in the Band, both the play, well, he didn't direct the play, but it was with all out actors, all of them. Uh, that were played, you know, Jim Parsons and and et cetera. Uh, and there was a thing, there was a thing. And then, but of course, then he did, um, uh, what's the thing? He did The Prom uh, for, for Netflix and he cast James Corden in one of the most important gay roles. And there was some, there was some criticism about that. And James Corden is, is, is a good actor. I don't like what he did with that role, but I mean, you know, he's totally pro-gay. Uh, but but does a gay person bring something, would have, would have brought something else to that? I think uh, uh, Brooks Ashkalakis, uh, who played him on Broadway, did bring something extra to that role and something that uh, was very, very appealing. But this is an ongoing debate. I remember Tony Kushner said, you, know, you can't ask anybody what they are. And, you know, it would be, you know, it would be wrong. It is acting. So this is going to go on forever. But also it comes up with ethnicity, right? I mean, come on. They used to have, you know, back in the day, if you were Native American, you couldn't get cast as they, you know, they always hired and, and even Asian roles. If you go back to the old movies, look at all the, look at all the Caucasians who were playing Asian roles, and it, which would never be allowed today. I mean, Mickey Rooney at Breakfast at Tiffany's was, was totally offensive. Uh, but, oh, yeah. but again, yeah, there is a type of blindness that happens. I think like there's been some very good films come out this year. Um, Supernova is another one, uh, which was uh, you know the two gay male roles were played by two very fantastic uh, straight actors, Stanley Tucci and, and Colin Firth. So it's like I do feel there's a certain dimension missing. As excellent as those narratives are. Something, something is lost, I think. That film, we have to agree. We're down to our last minute. That film was interesting because yeah. nobody in the film made any issue about that this was a gay relationship. They just had liberal friends and it was really about, you know, dealing with dementia and things like that. It just never came up. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's been great. Well, we have, we're still, we still have a minute to talk. Um, oh, uh, talk, talk about queer40.com in our last couple of minutes. Minute. Totally. Look, if you're if you're any age at all, but especially if you're the age of 40 and above, come and visit us at queer40.com. That's queer, F-O-R-T-Y.com. We have fabulous content and we'd love to have you drop by for a visit. And you are the editor-in-chief of Queer 40. Yeah. We can put that up on the screen. And uh, it's been great being with you. And of course, if you'd like to be on our email list to get our weekly bulletins, and we're gonna have lots of information and links, including to Lil Nas X's uh, video, uh, go to gayusatv.org and sign up and maybe even make a donation. Thank you for being with us. I think Ann will be back next week, but it's been lovely being with you. Same, Andy, thank you so much. Bye-bye.